and to think that some way you can answer the problems today that you couldn't answer yesterday. To think somehow that you can do for yourself today what you had to beg God to do on yesterday. Lord, that mercy. Some kind of way we tend to forget God, and there is a cost to forget God. I told you a couple weeks ago, every choice has a cost. Yes. yes. And there is a cost to ignoring God. And so God has sent this love letter on today. He sent a card that says, forget me not. Is that right? The American Greeting Company produces cards, and on the cards they have a line called Forget Me Not. Forget Me Not was intended to let the person know that not only does the person care, but to remember the person who cares for them. That's right. Is that right? Yep. And so God, when he made you, he didn't make you to forget him. Amen. He made you for himself. Song of Solomon 6 and 3. Somebody turn there with me, please. Song of Solomon. It's near the middle of your Bible. If you're unfamiliar. Song of Solomon 6, 3. Does somebody have it? Go ahead and read it for me. I am my beloved, and my beloved is mine. Mm -hmm. There you go. I am my beloved, and my beloved is mine. Hallelujah. Yeah. I am, now, there was some controversy when they were putting the scriptures together as to whether or not to include the Song of Solomon because it seems somewhat erotic. Mm -hmm. But it, they decided to include it because it was a representation of God's love with mm -hmm. us, his bride. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah, Jesus. And we are to declare, like the Shulamite woman declared, I am my beloved. That's right. Good God Almighty. Yes. And he is mine. Amen. Amen. This is God's intent for creating us. Just as the sister was talking about marriage earlier, the Bible declares in the New Testament that the woman is the glory of man, but man is the glory of God. And the Bible says that marriage is a mystery because it, it relates the relationship of Christ with us, his church. Amen. The bride of And so we ought to be as enraptured and in love with Jesus, yeah. with the Holy Spirit, with our Father God. Hallelujah. As a bride is with her bride. Amen. And his love for us, the Bible said, is as a groom for his bride. As a matter of fact, in line with Jewish custom, he has gone to prepare a place for us. Amen. You know, in, 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 those, in those ancient times, a young man would be betrothed to a woman. Right? And he would go during the betrothal period, there would be a period of time where they would be engaged, as we would call it today. And while they were engaged, he would go away and prepare a place for them, a new home for them and their new family. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you, yeah. Jesus. And the only responsibility she had while she was waiting was to get her dress ready, yeah. to make sure it was without spot or wrinkle. Yes. To make sure that when he came, that she had oil in her in her candle, in her vessel, yes. so that she would be ready when she heard his call. Yes. He was going to do all the preparation. He was going to go and get everything ready for him and his new bride to dwell together forever. Amen. And that's what Christ is doing right now for us. Wow. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. Right Thank now, we've been betrothed. Hallelujah. When you yes. got saved, you were betrothed in Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. You got engaged to Jesus. Yes. And he's right. gone to prepare a place for you, but he didn't leave you by yourself. Right. He didn't leave you without some help. Right. He, he left the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. To Hallelujah. equip and to comfort and Thank to lead you, and to guide. Ooh, Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So you're not on your own. You've got some help. Parakletos in the Greek is what the Holy Ghost is called. Your helper. Amen. He comes alongside and he helps you. Amen. Right? Amen. And so when God made you, this was his whole intent. His intent to make you was to have you. Amen. To have and to hold. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. To have and to hold. Because, because, because you have made us for yourself, St. Augustine said. And our hearts are restless till they find their rest in thee. Because God.
God made you for himself. You ain't designed to be filled with nothing else. You ain't designed to be satisfied with nothing else. Oh, he's giving you all good things to enjoy, but you won't be completely satiated until you find yourself in him. Amen. Do you hear me? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Because you were made for him like a hand made for a glove. You were made for God. And because you and you alone were made for him in this special way, the angels weren't made like that. Did you know that? You're, you and you alone were made in the image and likeness of God. You and you alone received the Holy Spirit of God to dwell inside of you. The angels weren't made like that. You're special. You're special amongst all his creation. That's why David said, what is man that you are mindful of? Who am I that you are so mindful? Yes. Have you ever thought to yourself, who am I that God just won't leave me alone? Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Who am I that God sees me as being so special? Yes. Huh? Who am I? Who am I? How is it that when I want to give up, God won't let me give up because he, he cares so much for me? Yes. Yes. Who am I that this God would think so much of me? When no one else thinks that much of me, but he does. He does. Because he made you for himself. Amen. Because he made you for himself, the Bible says in Exodus 20 and 5. Let's turn there. Exodus 20 and 5. Exodus is back toward the beginning, before Deuteronomy. Genesis. Exodus. Exodus 20, verse 5 says, somebody read it for me. You shall not bow down. To them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Yes, you shall have no other gods before but me. Yeah. Nothing yeah. shall take my place. Nothing shall have preeminence in your life but me. I want first place. And if you bow down to him, I want you to know for, right, right off the bat, I'm a jealous God. That's right. Why am I jealous? Because you belong to me. Amen. I'm not envious. If I was envious, I'd be wanting something that belonged to somebody else. But you see, you were never made for nothing else. You were made for me. And because you were made for me, I have the right to be jealous of you because you're mine. You're mine, and I'm yours, and I love you like that, so I'm jealous for you. He said it right there in the Ten Commandments. I don't want you to put nothing ahead of me. I don't want you to focus on nothing above me because I'm jealous for you. Amen. Let my wife stay on the phone too long. <laughs> and I'll find something to do around where she is. <laughs> and I don't even like it about myself, but I have to sometimes shut it down, but I want, I want that attention. See, these married women know what I'm talking about. Come on, come on, somebody. I want that attention, see, because she's for me. <laughs> I might let her go walk with Janet, but she for me. That's right. I might let her take your call every now and then, but I didn't marry her to minister to you. Right. Come on, somebody. I'm going to say that again. Uh, she might be your first lady, but she's my wife. I didn't marry her to minister to you. I married her to minister to me. She's mine. Amen. Amen. And I, I don't feel ashamed about that because no. God feels the same way. He says, I'm jealous. That's right. For you. Yes. That's right. I'm a jealous God. That's right. I don't want you focusing on nothing but me. Right. I want your whole life centered around Amen. I want all your friends to be my friends. Amen. I want all your activities to involve me. Amen. I'm jealous. Amen. For you. Now, if it, was, if it was somebody else, it would be a problem. Yes. That's right. But because it's the Lord your creator, yes. the one who made you Amen. for himself, yes. he has the right to be jealous. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Shelly. Okay. Amen. Hallelujah. He's jealous. He's jealous and he's offended when you prioritize anything above him. Amen. That's why he always gives you alternatives that include him. To anything else you want to do. That's right. For instance, for instance, for instance, when 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 he says, "Be not drunk with wine," he gives you an alternative. Yeah. But be ye filled with my spirit. Yeah, yeah. 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 He gives you an alternative. In everything, God gives you an alternative. What you got to get in the habit of doing? 
as you start to develop in your Christian walk, is you got to start asking yourself, how can I include God in this? Yes. Yes. Right. Amen. Yes. Yes. You see, because you don't want any area of your life that you haven't included God. That you had to put him first in. You want to say, God, how do you see this and how can I involve you in it? Because I don't want to have any area of my life that you're not in. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's you right. understand? Yeah. I wasn't yeah. made like that. Yeah. I can't thrive like that. Yeah. I don't do well like that. I need you in my life in every aspect of my life. Yes. Amen. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Amen. He made you that way. Yeah. Thank you. Good Whenever... You put something before him, he'll ask you for it. Ah. Oh, yeah. 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 Whenever you put something before yeah. God, God will ask you to give it to him. You know, right. you know how a little child will put keys in there and say, no, baby, give me that. Yeah. Yeah. You see, why do you do that? Because you know that that child putting those keys in their mouth is bad for yeah. them. Yeah. Oh. And so yeah. God knows that when you put something in his place, it's not good for you. Yeah. You see, what you got to understand is that God's glory and your joy goes together. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. They don't oppose one another. See, your flesh and the devil and the world got you thinking that if you're going to really have joy, if you're really going to be satisfied, then you need to eliminate God. That's right. Get him out the picture because he's a killjoy. Get him out the picture because he's going to spoil everything. Get him out the picture because he's going to tell you what you can't have, how you can't have it, what you can't do, and that's it. You'll just be sitting somewhere bored and, and, and sad. And the devil is a liar. That's right. That's right. right. The devil is good was God's idea. Let me say that again. Everything good was God's idea. Sex was God's idea. Enjoying nature was God's idea. Being prosperous was God's idea. Everything good was God's idea. He wants you to have it. He gave you in the New Testament, it says in the book of Timothy, he gave you all good things to enjoy. Amen. Amen. And so Amen. God's glory goes with your joy. Thank yes. you. You can't really have joy without God getting glory. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Without God getting glory, all your joy is tainted. Yes. It's perverted. Yes. It's defiled. Amen. God wants you to have sex, but you, He wants you to have it within His confines. Yes. Yes. That's the best way to have it. Amen. 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 Doing it God's way is the best way. Amen. Amen. Whatever it is. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 God's way. Yeah. And see, a lot of us so hard headed, yeah. we take a long time to realize that. Yeah. We gotta bump our head a lot. We gotta run into brick walls a lot. Uh, we gotta trip over and, and burn ourselves and hurt ourselves yeah. before yeah. we realize. Yeah. Wait a minute. It's, yeah. I, I done burnt myself 20 times. I think that thing is hot over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But see, God don't really want you to hurt yourself to find this out. He tells you ahead of time. Yeah. This way is the best way. Yes. When will you come to that realization? Hey, man. This way is the best way. Yeah. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, wisdom cries out everywhere you go. Yeah. And asks you, how long, you simple ones, will you stay simple? Yeah. How long are you going to keep on doing things your way and not listen to me? Amen. Huh? He, he says, he says in Proverbs, wisdom says, because you won't listen to me, I'm going to let you have your own way. Amen. You shall eat the fruit of your own ways. You're going to make a decision, and you're going to see how bad you are. See, sometimes I have to do my children and my loved ones like that. Amen. Sometimes I have to do the church members like Amen. that. I done told them, and that they won't insist on going their way, so I have to step back and say, well, go ahead. That's yes. right. Yes. I'm going to go over here and pray. That's yes. right. I ain't, ain't going to fool with you. That's Amen. Right. Yes. I ain't going to chase after you. That's right. I done right. told you. Yes. Now have it your way. Amen. And sooner or later, mm -hmm. they come back. Yeah. They come back. Not because I'm so wonderful, because God's wisdom is right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. They come yeah. back and say, oh, I think I messed up over here. If they're humble enough. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Now, if they're too prideful, they'll just stay in that room. Mm -hmm. right. But if they're humble, they'll come back and repent. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Amen. God will ask for whatever you put first. That's why God had to ask for Isaac. Yeah. Okay. God had to ask for Isaac. Because yeah. Abraham had to make too much of Isaac. Yeah. So God had to ask for him. That's right. Because whenever we put something in between us and God, even when it's the blessing of the Lord, 
Yes. You see, a blessing can be a curse if you put it between you and God. Yes. 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 A blessing can be a curse when you put it before yes. God. Because yes. He already said, I'm jealous now. I don't yes. have nothing ahead of me. Yes. I got a good wife. She likes things clean and nice. Sometimes she'll go outside and wash cars. <laughs> and she'll take a long time to do it. And again, I didn't marry her to wash cars. <laughs> Y'all follow the trend here? <laughs> I didn't marry her to wash cars. I married her for me. Okay. Why didn't you marry her? For you, right? Now you told her you would love her and take care of her and be for her. But you really married her not for that, but for Come on, somebody. Yes. Is that right? Yes. You really marry somebody for you. Yes. Yes. You got altruistic all you want to. You marry them for you. Yes. Yes. You wanted them in your life. Yes. Yes. Is that right? right? That God made you for him. That's right. Huh? He might let you do all these other things, but when it all comes down to it, he wants you to himself. That's Amen. right. Amen. You can have your friends. That's right. You can have your children. Yeah. But I'm your God. That's, That's right. what he says. That's what the Bible says. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Right. But I'm your God. So Abraham, give me that son of yours. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to see if you really love me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to see how committed you really are. Yeah. I'm going to see if I'm your God or if Isaac is your God. I'm going to see if I'm your God if you're going to bless the blesser or you're going to insult the blessing. Yeah. Are you going to yeah. yeah. me yeah. because of what I gave you? Are you going to elevate what I gave you above me? Preach it, Pastor. Preach it. Hallelujah, God. Thank you for the word. Mama wants a new car. But she spent too much time on that car. Yeah. Something might happen to that car. Because I ain't going to have nothing. job. I gave you your children. I gave you that house. I gave you that business. I gave you everything that you're making so much of and consuming your mind all the time. But you can't squeeze out no time for me. I'm the one who gave it. Have you forgotten that you asked for it and I gave it to you? Have you forgotten that they wouldn't give it to you? The bank wouldn't give it to you. The mother folk wouldn't give it to you. But I came and I gave it to you. I'm the one who delivered you. Hey, Nobody hey, else came looking for you. Yeah. I came and found you. Yeah, I heard yeah, your cries. Yeah, I'm the one who had mercy on you yeah. when everybody else left you. Yeah. 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 As, a, as a child that was born and your mother left you dead in your blood. And nobody had pity on you but me. Mm -hmm. I came along and I seen you. I seen you dying. And I looked at you and I said, now you're going to live. Yeah. Now you're going to live. Yeah. And I took you up and I watched you. And I raised you to myself. And when you got old enough, I married you. Because you are for me. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. All your lovers will leave you, he said. Yeah. They'll leave you on your bed of affliction, but I will never leave you. Yeah. I will never leave you. Polytheism was a popular way of looking at the world and understanding the forces of nature and whatnot. But in all the world, there was one group that only had one God. And this God didn't even have a wife. Because in Jehovah's mind, you're his wife. He don't need no other gods. Yes. He don't need a pantheon. Yes. He's got you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. And for all that he thinks of you, as much as he's mindful of you, how often do you forget about him? Mm. And so they ask for whatever you put in verse. Colossians 1.18 says, And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Preeminence means first place. Yes. Right? 
He wants first. Matter of fact, he said, he said, I don't mind you having things. He said, if you seek me first and my kingdom. Yeah. yeah. All those things everybody else is going after, I'll just add that to you. Woo. Yeah. And you see, here's the thing. Here's the problem. We don't see the things as additions. Mm. We think they're the main course. Yeah. He's the main course. Main course. He's your assignment. Yeah. He's your top agenda. Everything else in life is an accessory that God adds to you. It's yeah. just an addition. Thank you, Lord. I want you to look at everything in your life and say it's just an addition. It's just yes. an addition. Your husband is just an addition. Yes. Yeah. Your addition. favorite thing to do is just an addition. Right. It's, just it's not life. It's an addition to life. Yes. He alone is your life. Yes. 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 You hear me? Right. And until you get that attitude, you're going to find a persistent dissatisfaction in life. That's right. Yes. Because he made you that way. I'm going to say that again. Until you get the attitude that he is your life, you're going to have a persistent dissatisfaction with life. It's going to be persistent. Everything going to be well, and you're just not going to be quite satisfied. <laughs> You're not going to be able to put your finger on it. You're going to, oh, ain't nothing really wrong. Mm -hmm. And then you'll find things to get cranky about, and there's really nothing to be cranky right. about at all. Amen. But you're cranky right. because you ain't satisfied. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that your eye is never full of seeing. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Your ear is never full of hearing. In other words, you're always going to want to look at something. Mm -hmm. There's always something new to look at. Mm -hmm. right. Your ear is never full of hearing. There's always something new to hear, a new song or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he's placed eternity in your heart that you might not find it out. In other words, you're always going to have this yearn for more. Mm -hmm. And nothing in this world will satisfy. Mm -hmm. Because your satisfaction can't come from the world. Mm -hmm. He didn't make you to be satisfied with anything. Amen. Amen. And see, we go through life trying to make ourselves satisfied with everything else. Mm -hmm. Trying to entertain ourselves. Mm -hmm. Trying to find some meaning in something and some significance in this. And <laughs> trying to get some status amongst other people. But maybe if everybody else loved me, I'll feel loved. Mm -hmm. And all this other foolishness that we do, not mm -hmm. realizing that there's no satisfaction okay. no, outside our the problem is we esteem everything higher than we esteem God. Turn with me to 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30. Somebody read that if you will. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30. See what God says about esteem. 1 Samuel. I'm also mind you have it by now. You said verse 30? Verse Chapter 30. 2, verse 30. I yes. got it. Go ahead, somebody. Wherefore the Lord God of Israel saith, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. Mm -hmm. But now the Lord saith, be it far from me. Be it far from me. Now hold on, let me just bring the context here. He's talking to Samuel. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sorry, Samuel is speaking for the Lord to Saul. Saul was God's choice for king because Saul satisfied what the people wanted in the league. But God was going to go along with what the people wanted because the people wanted it so bad. Yeah. You got to be careful and check yourself about what you want. Because if you want it bad enough and keep persisting, God will let you have it. Mm -hmm. Okay? But now Sam, I mean, uh, Saul messed up. Because he didn't reverence the Lord. He was more concerned about what people thought than what God thought. Mm -hmm. And so now, God has to send Samuel, the same one who anointed him to be king, to come and denounce his kingship. That's where we're at right now. And Samuel is explaining to Saul what thus saith the Lord. Can you start back at the beginning, please? Oh, sure. Wherefore the Lord God of Israel saith, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. So now God's intention was to bless him. But because he took his eyes off of God. Go ahead. But now the Lord saith, 
Be it far from me. I, I can't. I can't do for you what I want to do. How dare I do that now? Mm. Go ahead. Be it far from me. For them that honor me, I will honor, mm. and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. That's right. Mm. Because you did not honor me, mm. because you took me out my place of first uh -huh. and put something else in my place, yeah. I cannot honor you. Yeah. God forbid that I honor you. Because you won't honor me. And so, because right. the opposite of honor is yes. despise. Mm -hmm. So whenever you don't put God first, that's right. there's that's a book right. out there by a guy named Grant Cardone. He's a character. But uh, he got a book called, If You're Not First, You're Last. Right. You read the book? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you're not first, you're last. And in God's mind, if you don't put him first, it doesn't matter what other place he's put in, he feels like he's last. Right. Amen. Did you know that you can affect God's feelings? Ooh. The Bible tells us in the New Testament not to grieve the Spirit of God. Amen. That's right. God loves you, so if he loves you, if he has that type of relationship with you, then you can hurt him. Anybody you love can hurt you. Amen. That's right. And so you can hurt God's feelings. In Genesis chapter 6, round verse 6, before the flood, the Bible says God was repentant within himself. He felt bad that he had made man because man had forgotten about God. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes I will. You see? And in the book of Ephesians, it says, Grieve not the, or quench not the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Don't grieve it, don't quench it. Yes. Because when you, when, you, when you put to the side and say, Yeah, yeah, whatever, and not listen to God, it hurts his feelings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. Amen. Yeah. It hurts his feelings. That you won't listen to him. That's right. Mm. You know how you always say, something told me. Mm. Uh, Man, I was going, and something told me, and I didn't listen. That's right. And that sense of regret that you mm. experience. Yeah. Well, God feels the same way when you don't listen to him. Mm. Amen. Because it was him trying to tell you something. Amen. It wasn't your intuition. Wow. It was God. Wow. Yeah. Because he Amen. loves you, he wants what's best for you. Yes. Is that right? Yes. But now when you won't listen to him, it grieves him. You're showing that when you put something else in his place, you're despising him. That's right. That's you right. Him? That's so true. Amen. You're despising him. Now, they used to ask us when I first got saved, they used to tell us that an idol was anything that we thought about more than we thought about God. Right. And some of us was kind of silly and didn't get it. So we thought it was thought about in quantity. Well, I'm on my job half the day, and I'm in school part of the day, and I ain't, I ain't really thinking about anything more than how can I keep God in my mind all the time? You know, because you think you got to keep thinking about God to mm -hmm. retain the knowledge of God. You got to God, 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 God. You can't holler and drive because you got to thank God. That's not what it's like. Yeah, I know. It's like being in love. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you go to that job, you think about how that job is going to provide for the one you love. Exactly. You think about what you're going to do with that check when you get it, yeah. and how y'all going to have a good time. Uh -huh. Is that right? That's true. That's how you keep him in your mind. You don't have to thank God, 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 because you can't retain two, two notions in your mind at the same time, especially two contradictory ones. That's why praising and worshiping God works. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Because you can't have two opposing thoughts in your mind at the same time. You, you ain't designed that way. You can't hold it. One will push out the other. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can't go along the way that the Buddhists think you can go and clear your mind. That's impossible. Anybody ever tried to clear your mind? Oh, God, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. That's why the Bible doesn't tell you to do that. Mm -hmm. Nowhere in your Bible will it say clear your mind. The opposite is said. It tells you to focus on something, yeah. to meditate on right. something. To meditate means to be obsessed with it. It's constantly on your mind. Right. Do you hear? Me? Amen. And so you're supposed to be obsessed with God. Yes. You're supposed to be so in love with God. Now, see, part of the problem is you have not ventured out toward God that way, so you haven't experienced His love back that way. Mm -hmm. Amen. And when you did, you didn't pay enough attention and you didn't remember. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. Anybody have been touched by the Lord? Amen. I mean, a deep touch. Yes. yes. Where, where it, it moves you emotionally. Oh, when you do yes. it was God. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. But it don't take long before you forget about it. That's right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it feels like it's life changing in the moment. Yes. Yes, yes. yes God. But it don't take long before it's like it didn't even happen. Yes. yes. That's why Moses warned you don't forget. Yes. yes. Stay enraptured. Yeah. Stay in love. love. Obsess over yes, your God. God. Yes, Lord. Yes. Do you hear me? Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. 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 You spend so much time and energy love. on other things that don't even satisfy. Yes. God's offended just like a good man would be offended when you look at somebody else to fill your needs. That's right. Mm -hmm. God says you should have came to me first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Ephesians 4 30 says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit whereby you were sealed unto the day of redemption. God's glory and your joy are never in opposition, but rather they go together. You're either going with God or you're going against God. Right. I'm going to say that again. Jesus said, Either you're for me or you're against me. Yeah. You're either going with God. Yeah. Is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Or you're going against God. If you're not going with God, God has to give you over. Mm -hmm. Yes. There are seven costs that you have to pay in life when you ignore God. Mm -hmm. Seven costs. Seven things you pay up. Seven things you give up when you ignore God. The first thing is his counsel. You give up God's counsel. You give up that direction and guidance in your life that you so desperately know you need. Mm -hmm. You give that up because you won't seek God. Proverbs 1, 29 and 32. Somebody turn there, please, and read it for us. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 29 and 32. Proverbs chapter 1, verses 29 through 32. Proverbs. Chapter 1. Go ahead, mother. Because I have hated knowledge. Because you hated knowledge. Mm. You see, when you won't listen to God, you literally hate knowledge. Can't nobody tell you nothing. Mm. Wow, come on, man. God is saying you hate knowledge. I've been trying to tell you. I've been trying to tell you so bad. I've been trying to, I've been giving you dreams. When God got to give you a dream, you really know you are headed. <laughs> because he can't even talk to you when you awake because you won't pay him no attention. So he got to wait till you go asleep to get something done in your life and show you something. When God give you a dream, you ought to repent and say, Lord, I'm so sorry you couldn't get my attention when I was awake. I was too focused on everything else. But he said, because you hated knowledge, what happens, mother? And did not choose to fear the Lord. And did not choose to fear the Lord. You didn't reverence me. They would have done. They would have none of my counsel. They would have none of my counsel. That, that's that's that King James talk for you. They would have none of my counsel. In other words, you didn't want to hear nothing God had to say. You didn't want God's advice because you wanted what you wanted. You ever notice when somebody want what they want, they won't come in and ask you your advice until after the fact. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, what you think about this? And you find out, you tell them what you think, and they already did it. Yes. They've already done it. They didn't really want your advice. They just want to know what you thought about it after they did it. If they really wanted your counsel, they would have sought your counsel first. Before they made a move. That's right. And some of us, we make moves and we don't seek God. We wait till after the move and ask God to bless it. We wait till after we done made up our mind. We're on our way there to do it. And now, God, while I'm going here, I need you to bless this now. Yeah, that's right. And then after we did, God, you think I made a mistake? Yeah, you made a mistake in not seeking the Lord. You yeah. would have none of my counsel. What else does it say, Mama? And despise my every rebuke. There go that word again. Mm -hmm. You despise my rebuke. You couldn't. You couldn't take me telling you nothing. You you weren't humble enough to say, Yeah, Lord, you're right. Mm -hmm. You had to scratch up and frown up and run away. You couldn't take nothing. You see, you can tell where you are spiritually. By what frustrates you? Mm. Wow. wow. Jesus. Mm -hmm. And if good godly counsel frustrates you, you are a baby in Christ. 
lies. Yeah. Because your best friend. Yeah. Because they tell you the truth. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't need nobody placating you and telling you what you want to hear. Yeah. You need somebody to tell you the truth so yeah. you can get right. Hey God. Is that right? Hey and sometimes your friends and your family won't tell you the truth. They go right along with what you want. <laughs> And, and you stay in a state where you can't get right. Mm -hmm. Keep on going, mother. Okay. And they despise every rebuke. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their own ways <laughs> and be filled with the foolish with their own fancies. See now, see now, this is the worst thing God can do to you is give you over to what you want. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. For you to eat the fruit of your own ways mm -hmm. and to have what you've been fantasizing. Wow. See, you ain't been thinking about him if you fantasizing about and, and see what he says, you want it so bad, here, take it. Yep. Have it. Have your feel. Yep. As a matter of fact, when he fed them manna in the desert, if you go back and read the story, they weren't satisfied with manna. Oh no. Ooh. They said, We want some meat. Mm -hmm. He said, All right, I'll give you some quail. And I'm gonna give you some quail, and it ain't gonna be a little bit. You're gonna eat it for 30 days. You're gonna eat it till it's coming out your nostrils. This is your God talking. To his people because he is offended that you ain't satisfied and appreciative for what he gave you. Yeah. And so he's gonna and so to punish you, he gonna give you what you want in abundance. Yeah. Wow. You want to hear have all you can take. Have it till you're sick of it. <laughs> they made that golden calf, and Moses crumbled up the calf and put it in the water and made them drink it. You want it? This is what you want? Have your feel of it. And God ain't say a word. Go ahead. Make them drink it, Moses. <laughs> make them drink it. That's right. Maybe they'll remember me next time. Anybody have any of those moments where you think to yourself, maybe I'll remember God next time. Yes. Before I sign that on the dotted line, maybe I'll, I'll remember God next time. Yes. Before I get in covenant with some with some un, 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 unequally yoked folk, maybe I'll I'll consult God next time. Amen. Amen. Before I get too far away in my fantasy about what I think I want with my life, maybe I'll consult God next time. Amen. Was that the end of it, Mother? Was no, that 32? 32. For turning away from the simple will say, slay them. The and turning away of the simple, turn away from what? From God's counsel. Right. Yeah, God's yeah. trying to speak in this ear. Yeah. Oh my God. You know how it is when, when your mama or, or a principal or a teacher call you and you really don't want to go? Mm -hmm. And you act like, you know, I ain't heard nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I think somebody called. No, I ain't nobody called me. I you turn it away. You, you turn it away. And the Bible says you're turning it away. Your ignoring of God is going to slay you. It's going to slay you. It's going to kill you. You turn it away from God. You, you hear what's right and doing what's wrong is what's going to kill you. Yeah, that's true. God ain't going to kill you. Your turning away from God is what's going to kill yes. you. Amen. Wow. Yes. And, you know, and the complacency of fools will destroy them. And the complacency of fools. Those people who don't want to change. Mm -hmm. But this is where I've been doing it. I just might as well just keep on doing it this way. Mm -hmm. That complacency mm -hmm. will kill you. Mm -hmm. And God said it. You don't want to change. Mm -hmm. You don't want to come to Bible study. You ain't become Bible study this long. Why well, start now? Yeah, right. <laughs> you don't want to change up none of your ways. You don't want. You don't want to start reading your Bible. Amen. You don't want to start worshiping God. That ain't your thing. Amen. You don't want to start 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 arranging your life around Him like He really wants you to. Amen. That would be best for you. Mm -hmm. And because you stuck in your own ways and you. you just can't find the energy or the time to make no changes. <laughs> that complacency is going to kill you. Wow. Jesus. The first thing you give up, the first thing you give up is God's counsel mm -hmm. when you ignore him. When you ignore God, you give up counsel. Mm -hmm. It costs you his counsel. That's what it costs you. 
Doing it your way, not praying, not consulting God, not seeking godly counsel, calls you God's direction in your life. Some of us directionless and ain't even praying. Amen. And complaining that we ain't got no direction. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank the you. second thing that ignoring God calls you is his cooperation in whatever project you take on. We call it blessing or favor. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 7. Somebody turn there and read it. Proverbs chapter 3. We're still in the book of Proverbs. Trust in the Lord. What version you got, sister? Uh, NIV. NIV. Go ahead. Trust in the Lord. Um, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. Do not lean on your yes. understanding. Yes. Quit saying, I got this. Mm -hmm. I got this, God. Mm -hmm. I don't need to pray. Mm -hmm. I got this. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Lean not on your own understanding. What does it say? After that. But in all your ways. But in all. Oh. What? Anybody know the what 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 all means in the Greek? All what means all. All means all. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah. In the Hebrew, all means all. Yeah. In your life, all means all. Amen. In all your so in other words, there should not be an area of your life where you have not asked yourself, God. How can I invite you in? There should not be an area of your life absent you knowing what God wants in that area of your life. There should not be any area of your life where you have not consulted God and said, God, what do you think about this? What do you think about what I eat? What do you think about what I watch? Jesus. What do you think about the people I hang around? Amen. Yeah. What do you think about how I handle my money? Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you think about what I do with my time? And you see, some of y'all won't do that because, again, you think in the back of your mind that God is a killjoy. That he's going to have you bored in the corner, <laughs> sad by yourself, reading your Bible all day and night. <laughs> the devil is a liar. Yes. Yes. Right. It is. How can he give you all good things richly to enjoy and then stick you in the corner in the monastery somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> How are you even going to win the world stuck in the monastery somewhere? Mm -hmm. Right. Much less enjoy what God is trying to give you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. See, I told you last week, you've got to entice yourself with, with what God wants for your life. Mm -hmm. you got to see how good it is. Some of y'all ain't searched out how good what God got for you is. I'm going to say that again. Some of y'all lazy. Mm -hmm. That's right. A lot of Christians are lazy. Yes, yeah. that's true. God said, come, let us reason together. Yeah. One reason why you keep falling and backsliding and having a hard time is because you ain't really had no reason in session with God. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You ain't really went to your father and said, can you show me in the word? Can you explain this to me? Can you, or, or, or went to a pastor or went to somebody that you know, know God and said, can you help me figure this out? And then listen to what they say. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Bible Amen. says take heed yeah. to Amen. what you hear. Yeah. Hearing is one thing. Taking heed is doing what you hear. Amen. The Bible says don't be a, a, a hearer only, yeah. but be a doer. doer of the word. Yeah. Yes. Is that right? Amen. Amen. You see, Amen. some of us don't know that we condemn ourselves every time we come to church and we hear all this good word and don't do nothing with it. Amen. Wow. Amen. Because who much is, to whom much is given. Much much is required. Required. So you might want to go find a church where they ain't preaching nothing. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be held accountable for what you right. My yes. daughter figured that out a while back. She said, ah, don't tell me. <laughs> I don't want to hear. I said, why? What's wrong with you, girl? She said, because I don't want to be accountable for it. That's right, yeah. yeah. Now, that right. sounds crazy, but that's wiser than y'all keep on hearing all this good stuff. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> now, the best case is you hear the good stuff and you do something with it. That's yes. right. You don't run away from it. Yeah, amen. But you definitely don't keep hearing it and not do it. That's, that's right. true. You're not taking heed to what the Lord is saying. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Have mercy. And so if you if you if you trust in him with all your heart, lean not to your understanding, he will direct your path. He will bless what you do with. Mm -hmm. 
He will cooperate with you in what you're doing. The Bible says, unless the Lord build a house, when you labor to build something, you're building it in vain. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anybody ever build anything in vain? Yes. When yes. it got that degree, oh, and then didn't do nothing with it. Mm -hmm. Why not working over here? He didn't yeah. need that over there. Mm -hmm. Huh? Spend years with somebody that you, you never married and, 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 and was never right for you to begin with. Thank you. Come on, somebody. Yes. Um, am I telling the truth? Amen. Yes. Yes, sir. The third thing that you give up when you don't see God is his comfort. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Somebody read that for us, please. Oh, a comfort. We often forfeit. Oh, a needless pain. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. I think it's joy. Second Corinthians 1. Anybody got it yet? Yes. Verses 3 and 4. Somebody read it, please. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Father of compassion and the God of all comfort. God of what? All comfort. All comfort. Where your comfort come from? God. It don't come from Oprah, Dr. Phil, or Dr. Oz. Your comfort don't come necessarily from your friends that don't know what to say to you. Your comfort comes from the Lord. He wants to comfort you. You hear me? Just like a loved one wants to be the one to comfort you. Just like a woman wants to be the one to comfort her husband, mm -hmm. and a husband wants to be the one to comfort his wife, mm -hmm. God wants to be the one to comfort you. Amen. 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 Thank, you Thank you, Lord. Woo! Yes. Good God. Yes. Keep reading. Who comforts us in all our troubles. And how many troubles? All. all. Go ahead. So that we can comfort those in any trouble. So did God comfort you in your trouble, then turn around and put purpose to your path. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. He, he, yes. he show up. He show up and comfort Amen. you yes. in your trouble. Yes. And then turn that thing around. What the devil meant for evil, he turned yes. around and, and, right. and use it to multiply more good and use yes. you to comfort other folk with the same comfort that he comforted you. Jesus. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Lord. Is that what it says? Yes. That's what it says. Let's move on. I think that's more what we're gonna move on. What number was that? Three. Three. Number four. The other thing that you give up is cheer. You give up cheer. Nehemiah 8 and 10 says that what? The joy of the Lord is my strength. So now if you are making choices without consulting God, you're giving up some joy. Mm. You're giving up some joy. Because when you know that God got you doing it, it adds to the experience. Yes. <laughs> when you can say, God got me going this way. Why did you do that? Well, you know, the Lord said, man, it, it takes your joy to another level when you know that it came from God. Amen. When you ain't just living haphazardly. As a matter of fact, you can be more resilient when you know it's God. Amen. When you know that you go to minister in the name of Jesus out of the love of the Lord and somebody give you their behind, their proverbial behind, the gifts, it don't hurt you as bad when you know you're doing it for God. Yes. Amen. When things don't work out, you say, well, this is, I just work here. This is God's project. Yes. Hallelujah. I leave the results to him. I just obey. You see? It, it get, it, there's a certain comfort, there's a certain joy that you experience when you know that it's all that God is in it. That's right. But when you don't know God is in it, you're left with your own calamity. That's right. That's true. You're left in your own tragedy. And in one place, God said he'll laugh at you. In the book of Proverbs, he's, wisdom said, I shall laugh at your calamity because you will have none of my advice. Wow. And the day of your calamity, he said, you even going to call on me and I ain't going to answer that prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Now he ain't talking about repentance. Yeah. He's talking about that annual prayer you be praying. Yeah. Asking God, yeah. why you let this happen yeah. when you didn't even consult him in the first place? Yeah. That prayer. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. The fifth thing 
that you give up, when you don't see God, when you ignore his counsel, is confidence. Isaiah 30, verse 50. Let's read that in the NIV. Anybody got that in the NIV? Isaiah chapter 30, verse 15. Yes, ma'am. Is that confidence or competence? Confidence. We're going to get to competence next. Isaiah, Isaiah, <laughs> you say it, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 15. I got it. NIV, okay. please. Okay. I like the way NIV said it. Okay. 15. Yep. 15. Okay. So. Whoever, come on. Okay. Uh, Isaiah 30, 15. <clears throat> this is what the Sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel says. So this ain't my words, it's his. Right. In repentance and rest is your salvation. Mm -hmm. In quietness and trust is your strength. Ooh. But you would have none of it. Mm. You said, no, we will flee on horses. <laughs> Therefore you flee. You I said... Went a little too far, right? Mm -hmm. Are you still at 30? Yes, yeah. Okay, go ahead. 15. Finish 15. Yeah, I mean, are you still I finished 15. 15. 15. Okay. Yeah, you would have none of it. You would have none of it, right. And so you, that's a strength, that's a confidence. When you know that you're doing things that God said do. Even when it doesn't seem like it worked out, if you have a word from the Lord, oh, you can oh, persevere. Yeah. As a matter of fact, in the book of Timothy, Paul admonishes Timothy. He says, I want you to war with the prophecies that were spoken over you. In other words, that word that you got from God, mm -hmm. that prophecy that you would receive, mm -hmm. that now it looked like your life is so far from it, like nothing's going to work out, I want you to go back and take that prophecy and say to yourself, God said, that's all that matters. I want you to fight the devil, not with your own mind, but just with what God said. Yeah, just go back to what God said to you, rehearse it to yourself, and you're going to fight a good fight. Yeah. You're gonna win the war. You're gonna war with those prophecies. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? Because often every prophecy has to be challenged for authenticity. Mm-hmm. That's right. <laughs> I'm gonna say that again. Mm -hmm. Every prophecy has to be challenged for the authenticity of the anointing. Mm -hmm. We'll get into that another time. Mm -hmm. But understand, whenever God says something, it has to be challenged. Mm -hmm. It has to be challenged before it culminates, before it's completed, before you see the end of it. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. It has to experience some resistance. Mm -hmm. And once you understand that, when you experience the resistance, you don't, you don't focus on the resistance. You go back to the prophecy. Mm -hmm. Prophecy. How do you spell prophecy? P-R-O. Pro. What does pro usually mean? Forward. It means going yes. forward, right? And so it's, it's not telling you what is now. That's a word of wisdom. A word of prophecy is telling you what's going to be. So everything in between now and what's going to be don't matter. Mm -hmm. It's not telling you, oh, you, you're going to have a bed of roses now. It's telling you about the bed of roses on the other side of the storm. Yes. See, God don't tell you everything. He don't always tell you about the wolves and the storms and the... And the hell you got to go through. Yeah. When, 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 when he told them to go to the other side, he didn't tell them there was going to be a storm in between. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Amen. He told them what they needed to know. Go to the other side. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And then wondered why they were so scared. I told you to go to the other side. You see, in Jesus' mind, if I told you to go to the other side, come hell or high water, there's no storm in all creation that can keep you from going to where I told Amen. you was going to go. Amen. Amen. So I don't care what the storm looked like, you're still going to make it to the other side. Yeah. That's what Paul understood in the book of Acts. That's why when there was a storm, yeah. when Paul was chained up, he told the soldier, he said, don't worry, we're going to get there because the angel of the Lord then told me, I know the boat is rocking. I know you're throwing stuff over right now. I know we're taking on water. But you, Paul sat down and took a, had a meal. He said, now y'all calm yourself down and chill out because God has said we all going to make it. Yeah. You see? Yeah. I don't care what you're going through. You got to go back to what God said. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. What God said is all that matters because yeah, you're going to go through something yeah. before you get there, but you're going to yeah. get there. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. What number was that? Five. five. I was five. Number six, competence. Look at that. Competence. Romans chapter 1, verse 16 through 25. This is a long one. Who wants that? 
Romans, Romans chapter 1, um, verses 16 through 25. We're talking about competence. I got it. Go ahead. Do you want NIV or do you want us? Uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you get one, you get first. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. Because the words that I preach contain in them power if you believe them, to bring salvation into your life. Remember, God don't do much but give you a word. Amen. Now it's incumbent upon you to respond to his stimuli. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? We always think that God's going to magically change the situation. No, God's going to magically speak a word. Yeah. And God's word is so potent that he know he don't got to do nothing else. <laughs> If his word is received in some good ground, mm -hmm. baby, that's all it takes. Hallelujah. In the beginning, all God did was speak. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's all you need speak. to solve any problem yes, Lord. is just one word from God. Mm -hmm. And so this gospel contains in the word the power to change your life. Yes, Lord. If you believe. Yes. Go ahead. Amen. First to the Jew, First to then the Jew. to the Gentile. Uh -huh. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Mm -hmm. Just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. That's right. Keep going. Oh, okay. Do uh, all the way to twenty-five. Oh, okay. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness. So there, Paul is making a contrast. He's saying, look. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, even though it seems like foolishness. I'm out here preaching. It doesn't seem like it's a great philosophy that makes sense. You see, sometimes things that make sense ain't got no faith right. in it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes things that got faith in it don't seem to make sense. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And so he's like, I ain't worried about it. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, even though I'm standing here and look like I'm preaching foolishness to mm -hmm. some people. Mm -hmm. It don't make no sense to your carnal mind. Mm -hmm. But in it, there is the power of God. But let me give you the contract. The things that you think make sense. Mm. The wrath of God is revealed against that. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, so the wrath of all God the is godliness revealed. and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Hold on. They do what? Suppress they the suppress truth. They suppress the truth. So the truth is there. The truth is always there, but they hold it down. They don't like it, so they cover it up. No. Huh? Yeah. You, don't, you don't like the truth, so you, you just suppress and repress it. <laughs> so you don't have to deal with it. That's right. <laughs> Go ahead. Who suppress the truth and unrighteousness? Is that how it went? Uh, in their wickedness. In their wickedness, okay. Who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Uh-huh, keep going. Since what may be known about God is plain to them. What's, made, what's known about God is plain. All you got to do is open your eyes and you see the complexity in life and you know that there has to be a design. Okay? <laughs> Things are just too complex. A single cell organism could not have even come together. The chances of that, of a, of a protein coming together by itself is so astronomical and then having to be in the right environment for it to sustain itself and then having the, N the, the RNA to, to start to duplicate itself, it's just too astronomical all by itself. By chance. See, some people, chance is God. <laughs> Seriously. Some people, chance and material is God. Yeah. You give material enough time, and even though scientists will tell you there's no such thing as spontaneous generation, there's no such thing as life coming out of non-life, they tell you that's how the earth started. That's how life started. And they'll tell you now, you, you can't put no rocks together and just let them sit there and something happen. But then they tell you, oh, but if you give enough time, mm. way back when, mm. yeah. that's, that's their whole philosophy. You know? Something will happen. And the Bible goes on to say that proclaiming themselves to be wise, go ahead, because God has made it plain. God made it plain, y'all. Just look around. Open your eyes. Mm -hmm. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that people are without excuse. God said, if you look at creation, you're without excuse for thinking there ain't no God. Mm -hmm. Come on now, be real. That's right. Come on now, be real. I think it was uh, Kant who said, if you found a watch on the moon, there's no other justifiable explanation other than the fact that there is a watchmaker somewhere. Mm -hmm. 
That's right. That's right. <laughs> just don't make no sick. A watch is just too complicated. And we just talk about a watch now. That's right. We ain't talking about a human. We ain't talking about a giraffe. We ain't talking about a whale. We ain't even talking about plants in nature. We talking about a watch. Mm. If you found a watch, you have to assume there's a watchmaker. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Come yeah. on. That's right. And so you telling me that we got all this wonderful abundance of complicated life. Mm -hmm. And there's no life giver. Mm -hmm. It just sprung into existence. Right. Go ahead. For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. Now here's the thing. He said, although they knew. Although they knew. The truth is you know. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know atheists. You know agnostic. Mm -hmm. You know there's a God. Now you may not know which God is God. Mm -hmm. You may not know how to approach God, but you know there's, there's a God. God. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. But their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. So he said, even though they knew there's a God, their thinking became futile. Their foolish hearts were dark. They came up with philosophies to explain stuff other ways because they didn't like the truth. Right. Mm -hmm. That's impressive. Go ahead. Um, although they claimed, wait, did I do that? No. although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like a mortal human being and birds and animals and reptiles. Hmm. Therefore, God gave them over in the there go again. Desires. There you go again. Okay. God said, if you insist on having it your way, that's right. Now, 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 you proclaim yourself be so wise. I'm gonna let you have what you want. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. Let's just stop right there. Okay. Even though you know God, you still ignore Him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you think you so wise. Mm. Even though you know that God be prompting you and you know what God has said about things, you still suppress that truth to do what you want to do. That's right. Because you think you're so smart that you can bypass God. Mm. And in so doing, the Bible says, you declare yourself to be wise, but you really make yourself a fool. You're giving up on being really competent and knowing what to do for, for, for acting foolish in what you do. Do you see that? The next thing, the last thing I think it is, number seven. Are we at number oh, seven? Oh, yes. you didn't want to hear that very, I mean, that's the best verse. Go ahead, give it to me. I'm it sorry, maybe I missed something. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie Ooh. and worshipped and served created things rather than the creator who is forever praised. Amen. 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 Yeah. And see, instead of worshiping the creator, <laughs> instead of worshiping the giver, Mm -hmm. Too often we worship the gift. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Right? Mm -hmm. You ever give somebody something they don't say thank you? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. Now you were happy to give it to them. Yes. You wanted them to enjoy it. <laughs> but when they ran off and didn't turn back, mm -hmm. Jesus was happy to heal these lepers who begged him for healing. As a matter of fact, Aleppo was an outcast. Nobody wanted to deal with them. And these men were hollering for him, Fall, have mercy on the son of David. And he healed them. And they weren't even Israelites, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. I believe they were foreigners. Ten of them. Mm -hmm. And only one came back. And Jesus didn't say, oh, this is so good, one came back. He said, what happened to the other nine? Mm -hmm. You see, God expects for you to respond right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. He expects for you, so when he gives you something, he don't expect for you to run off obsessing on what he gave you. Mm -hmm. right. He don't expect for you to put what he gave you in front of him. That's right. Amen. He expects you to turn around and say, thank, thank you, you Lord. for my wife. Yes. Thank you right. for my job. Yes. Thank you for my provision. Yes. Thank you for my nice warm yes, home. Lord. Thank you, Jesus, That's that I'm right. still alive and got the function of my life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Thank you. Not worship yes, the gift Lord. over the giver. That's right. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Thank God. You, Please. Thank you, Lord. Last thing you give up is your completeness. 
Jeremiah 2, 13, we're closing. Somebody find Jeremiah 2, 3, verse 13, please. You give up your completeness. Did you know you're complete in Christ? Amen. You really don't need for nothing. You really don't want for nothing. Lord is your shepherd, you shall not want. Now, you're temporarily without certain things, but all things are yours. But you can only access that completeness in Christ. Jeremiah 2, 13. Come on. My people have committed two sins. My people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me. First of all, they Ooh. forsook me. They forgot about me. What's that? The spring of living water. And I'm, I'm the one that can really satisfy yeah, I'm the spring yeah, of living yeah. water. And have dug their own sisters. They turn around and did their own thing to satisfy themselves. Broken sisters. And, 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 and when they did it, it was so broke. It was so sad. It was so pitiful that they couldn't even hold water. Mm -hmm. All that you try and do by yourself, Jesus said, could come to nothing. You can do nothing without me, he said. All, all that you're trying to do on your own is as filthy rags. Even the good things that you think is right is wrong without me. That's right. It's wrong because you ain't right without me. Yes. Because you weren't made to be without me. Yes. And so everything you try to do, whether good or bad, is wrong without me. Amen. Yes. I had on the board, your flesh is yourself. Without him. Amen. Huh? Hallelujah. Even the good you want to do. Even the Amen. good. I, I want to emphasize Thank this. God. Because we sometimes Thank we oh, but this is good, God. Why won't you bless it? God. Because you're putting it before Thank him. Jesus. You're trying to do it without him. It don't matter how good you think it is. It ain't good if it's without him. Amen. He's the most important Amen. ingredient in everything. That's Amen. right. He's what makes things complete. Whenever you try to do something without him, you're, you're digging a hole with broken sisters. You're trying to hold water, and, and, and you can't. And you're forsaken the one. You're giving up the one that actually gives you living water. Thank you, Jesus. You're forsaking living water. You're forsaking feeling complete for all the stuff that you're chasing like that makes you incomplete. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Joshua chapter 9, let's turn there. And I'm closing. As we said several times, this illustrates, this illustrates it so well. Joshua chapter 9. Joshua chapter 9. And I'm closing. I want you to think about the cost of ignoring God. Joshua chapter 9. Thank you, Lord. And it came to pass when all the kings which were on this side of Jordan, mm -hmm. in the hills and in the valleys, and in all the coasts of the great sea over against Lebanon, the Hittite and the Amorite and the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Hivite and the Jebusite, heard thereof that they gathered themselves together to fight with Joshua and with Israel with one accord. And when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done unto Jericho and to Ai, they did work wildly. And went and made as if they had been ambassadors, and took old sacks upon their asses, and wine bottles, old and rent and bound up, and old shoes and cloth clothed upon their feet, and old garments upon them, and all the bread of their provision was dry and moldy. Mm -hmm. And they went to Joshua to the camp at Gilgal and said, and said unto him and to the men of Israel, We be come from a far country. Now therefore make ye a league with us. And the men of Israel said unto the Hivites, Peradventure ye dwell among us, and how shall we make a league with you? What, what, if, you're, what, if, you're in, uh, what if you're some of the inhabitants that we're supposed to wipe out? We're supposed to push you out, and now we're, we're about to make So they already knew, wait a minute, there might be something here. Something told me. <laughs> and they said, Joshua, we are thy servants. And Joshua said to them, who are you? Or who are ye? And from whence come ye? And they said, from a very far country thy servants are come because of the name of the Lord thy God. For we have heard of the fame of him and all that he did in Egypt. See, they're trying to say something good, right? Mm -hmm. And all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites, that were beyond the Jordan to Sihon, king of Heshbon, and to Ah, king of Bashan, which were which was an Ash Asheroth, 
Wherefore our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spake to us, saying, Take victuals with you for the journey, and go to meet them, and say unto them, We are your servants, therefore now make ye a league or an alliance with us. Right? Or a treaty. This our bread we took hot for our provision out of our homes on the day we came forth, lying through their teeth, to go to you. But now behold, it is dry. They're catering to their senses and not the spirit. Okay? Mm -hmm. Behold, it is dry. And it is moldy. And these bottles of wine which we feel were new, and behold, they are rent. And these are garments, and our shoes are become old by reason of the very long journey. And the men took of their victuals and asked not counsel at the mouth of the mold. Y'all see that in verse 14? They looked at what they saw with their eyes, mm. and they did not consult the Spirit of God. Mm. Mm -hmm. And Joshua made peace with them, and made a lead with them, to let them live. And the princes of the congregation swear by them. And it came to pass at the end of three days, after they had made a lead with them, that they heard that they were their neighbors, and they, they dwelt among them. And the children of Israel journeyed and came unto the cities on the third day and said, Now, now the cities were Gibeon and, and, and Sheriff and Beeroth and Kiriath Jerim. And the children of Israel smote them not because the princes of the congregation had sworn unto them by the Lord God of Israel. And all the congregation murmured against the princes of the Lord. But all the princes said unto the congregation, We have sworn unto, the, unto them by the Lord God of Israel. Now therefore we may not touch them. See, God had given these people over to them. They were supposed to go in and kill them and take their stuff. Mm -hmm. But now they couldn't because they didn't see God. Mm -hmm. God had told them all this stuff is yours. You can kill them, take the land. But they couldn't do what God wanted them to do because they didn't consult God. They were led by their senses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you hear me? We may not touch them. This we will do to them. We will even let them live, lest wrath be upon us because of the oath which we swore unto them. And the princess said unto them, Let them live, but let them be hewers of wood and drawers of water until all the congregation as the princess has promised. And Joshua called for them, and he spake unto them, Wherefore have you beguiled us, saying, We are very far from you when you dwell among us? Now therefore ye are cursed. And there shall come on, come, I'm sorry, and shall none of you be free from being bondmen and hewers of wood and drawers of water for the house of my God. And they answered Joshua and said, Because it is certainly told thy servants how that the Lord thy God commanded his servant Moses to give you all the land to destroy all the inhabitants of the land from before you. Therefore we were so afraid of for our lives because of you and have done this thing. And now behold, we are in your hand as it seemed good and right unto thee, do unto us. In other words, they had to live with their decision. Did y'all hear me? When you don't consult God, you sentence yourself to live with your mistake. Amen. Everybody stand up on your feet.